Welcome to a video on learning Twine. This video is an extended example of using variables in the story format Harlow. It is the year 80XX and humans have moved into space. And they are not the only ones. Cephalopods have come along with us. You stand in front of the bar on a small mining moon. It's late and you want to meet someone new. Maybe get lucky, maybe get a story. If nothing else, a drink, some conversation, and then a bed. Enter the bar. Let's pause here and go back to the story. Looking at the story map view, we see a number of different passages are interconnected to each other. This shows us that there are passage links in these passages that connect the other, connect one to the other. Let's start here by looking at the start passage. As this is an extended example of using variables on Harlow, I have set up four variables here. No Sam, no 278, no Joan, and has drink. Each of these are used throughout this example for d various different reasons. As this, this is somewhat of a dating simulator, although uh, boiled, da boiled down a little bit as it were, um, the first three of these, no Sam, no 278, and no Joan, used to see whether or not we knew these people's names. We see here, coming back to the presentation, in order, a cute squid, a handsome nautilus, and a suave octopus are, once we know their names, replaced with their names. So we can use variables in this case, in this extended example, as a sort of knowledge check. Does the player know something yet? And if they do, go ahead and place that knowledge in the context of what they're looking at. So here we don't know their names, the cute squid, the handsome nautilus, or the suave octopus. But once we learn their names, those can then be replaced with the value of those variables. Finally, at the end of the start passage, we see has drink. This is used to whether or not the person has a drink or not. And as we see here, let's go back to the presentation, let's get a drink immediately and see how that works. So we can get a drink. So walk over to the bartender. Moments later, you hear a telepathic message. What can I get you? You concentrate on your drink of choice and the bartender nods and moves away. Less than a minute later, you have your drink. And see the variables still here. We don't know their names. But notice, let's try to go to the dance floor. Well, we can't, we have a drink. You know you can't take drink onto the dance floor. So now, we, he we see a difference here. We picked up a drink and then we tried to do something. And having that drink, using this variable, and this conditional here, prevented us from taking another action. This is another example of using variables in Harlow. Not only can we check the knowledge of things, if the player knows certain things or has had certain interactions, we can also use it as a type of inventory. Does the player have this certain thing? In this case, because they have the drink, we can't go onto the dance floor. Let's leave the bar. And now we see an additional effect here. You drink what's left of your drink and return the glass to the bar. You're done for the night you head out. But if I restart this, close this, close this, and restart, enter the bar, and now leave the bar, we don't see the same reaction. So not only can we use variables in this extended example as a way to check knowledge, whether or not somebody has interactions or has knowledge of names in this case, we also, like I said, use it as an inventory. Do they have a drink? If so, do certain things. Let's go look at this example, though, this very specific passage. So leave the bar, and we see this same conditional here. If has drink is true, we see this message. If not, nothing helps happens, we head out, and that's the end. Throughout this, for example, if we pull up enter the bar, we see a number of uses of that continuing here. We see the if and else macros here. If we know Sam's name, show Sam's name. Else don't, and say a cute squid. If we know 278's name, if we know Joan's name. And we see back and forth here, again, checking this knowledge. Does the play, Has the player had these interactions yet? Does the player have this knowledge? And if not, make a choice based on the value of this variable, true or false, if or else in these case. Being very more, being explicit in this case and showing if and else. Moving over to tables, we can see the same thing. I didn't show this in the presentation, but if we know 278's name, it shows 278 instead of the text, a handsome Nautilus. Notice we're using a passage link here to point at that passage, disguising the fact that we don't know the name yet. Because we don't in this case. But if we did, it would show 278, but both point to the same thing. 
Notice again, has drink is down here. If it's true, or if it's false in this case, we can go get a drink. If it's true, we already have a drink, and so we're not getting a second one. Throughout this extended example, these are used in multiple cases here. Again, as a two different use cases in this example. Uh, knowledge, whether or not players had certain interactions, in this case using the knowledge of names, Sam, Joan, uh, as well as 278, and whether or not the player has something, a very simple use case as an inventory, whether or not they have a drink or not. And as you play through the different branches of this example, you can see that drink interacts with different things. As we saw in the one case, we can't go in the dance floor if we have a drink. But in another case, that's as part of this, the drink actually becomes part of another part of the story, where you can hand off the drink to something else and other actions occur. This has been a simple review of this example, Cephalopod Dating, that uses variables in Harlow. I highly recommend actually downloading this example or viewing it online and part of this YouTube description and possibly even importing it into your own story list and try and play with this to see the different uses of the Harlow variables in the story. Again, used as knowledge and used as a simple form of inventory, whether or not a player has an item or not. Thanks for watching.